Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to simplify complex fractions. Now basically complex fractions don't mean anything with complex numbers. Basically what they have is we have an expression in the numerator and or in the denominator that is separated by addition or subtraction. Because if we just had a fraction in the numerator and a fraction in the denominator then it'd just be dividing rational expressions which I cover in another video. So complex fractions you can see here I have the numerator and denominator. Here I just have the denominator um, where our term is separated by addition or subtraction. So there's kind of two ways we could do this. The first way is we could combine our terms. So therefore we have a common numerator and denominator and then just simply divide them by multiplying by the reciprocal. And if you're really familiar and really um, comfortable with multiplying by the reciprocal, then that's fine. The only problem is you have to add and subtract the terms first, combine them, then you have to divide the two fractions. So it's kind of a little bit of extra work. The way that I prefer to do this problem, and let me see, do I have one that will maybe, uh, maybe I'll do that one by combining them. Uh, that one shouldn't be, actually, you know what, I'm not even going to go through that route. The easiest way for me to do it, and the way that I'm going to teach you this, is eliminate the fractions. And to do that, what we're going to do is eliminate them by uh, multiplying by the LCD, or LCM, least common denominator, or least common multiple. We'll just call it least common denominator. So let's look at the first example here. You can see here I have a fraction x divided by 3 minus 6, and then in the denominator I have 10 plus 4 over x. So if we want to think about this as common denominators, we need to write 6 and 10 as denominators. So therefore, you can see out of all my denominators of every fraction I have up there, I have a 3, a 1, a 1, and an x. So I need to find the least common denominator that divides into every, sing, um, every single one of those, or each, I'm sorry, I always, that's exactly what I, students do. I need to find the smallest denominator that each and one of those denominators divides into. So the smallest number that 3 divides into is 3. The smallest num uh, variable x divides into is x. Well, 1, both is definitely going to divide into 3 and x. So therefore, my LCD is equal to 3x. So once you have identified the LCD, now what you do is multiply it by everything. Because to produce an equivalent equation, uh, or equation, or we're not dealing with equations, but equivalent fractions, we've got to make sure we multiply everything by our LCD. So I'm going to multiply everything. Now, by multiplying everything, you can see here, by using the division property, my 3's divide out, x times x is x squared. And then minus 6 times 3x is just going to be 18x. All over, 3x times 10 is going to be 30x. And then here, you can see my x's divide out, 4 times 3 is going to be 12. OK, so now, just by multiplying by the LC, you can see I got rid of all those extra fractions. Now I'm just left with one simple fraction where now I want to make sure I can simplify to make sure it's in the, its simplest terms. So I can simplify this. I can factor out an x here. So I'd have an x minus 18. Oops. So by factoring out an x, I have an x times x minus 18. All over, over here, it looks like I can factor out a 6. So when factor out a 6, I get a 5x plus 2. Now this can't be simplified any further. But it's just good, to, it's good practice to make sure you always simplify it to its furthest, um, furthest component to make sure there's no other simplifying that can be done. All right, so in the next one, uh, this one kind of gets a little tricky with the LCD. A lot of students have trouble. They're OK with you know, finding the LCD of numbers. And they're OK with finding the LCD when, even when we throw in a variable. But they really have trouble when they're finding the LCD of expressions. And I have videos you know, explaining this, why this works, and how we do this. But the easiest way to kind of think about this is, you know, an LCD is a, is, is a number that every single one of your denominators divide into. So if you multiply, you know, this times this times this, that means they're all going to divide into it, right? Um, so therefore, the LCD is simply just the product of these. You know, like for instance, you know, 5 times 6 is 30. Well, 5 divides into 30 and 6 divides into 30 because the product of them is equal to 30. So you'd say the LCD is 30 because 5 and 6 both divide into them and 5 times 6. So if we multiply all these, we're going to get our LCD. OK, so again, if you remember, all we simply need to do is just multiply everything by our LCD, every single term. So over here, we'll do multiply x minus 2 times x plus 1 times x. Over here, we'll do x minus 2 
times x plus 1 times x, and then up top, x minus 2 times x plus 1 times x. Now, this is really, really important for us to notice that every single one of these terms is now being multiplied, right? And you remember multiplying was very, very important at the beginning of this, of this section because when we have terms that are separated by multiplication, we can apply the division property. Basically, anything that's the same in the numerator and the divider divides to equal 1. So here, my x minus 2's divide to equal 1. Leave me just with up top. Now, again, I'm not going to simplify this right now. I'm just going to leave this in factored form. So I'm going to do 16 times x times x plus 1. In the denominator here, I have my x plus 1's divide out. So again, in non-simplified form, I'm going to have 4x times x minus 2. And then over here, my x's are going to divide out. So that's just leaving me with um, times 6 times x minus 2 times x plus 1. Now, the point of leaving this in factored form was, again, I can see, oh, I can simplify this even further, right? Um, you could do a couple ways. You could say 4 divides into 16. Let's, let's do another color here. You could say 4 divides into 16 four times, right? So that's really 16 over 4 is really the same thing as 4 over 1. We just don't write that 4 there. These x plus 1s, those divide to 1. And then I'd really have 4 over 6. Well, let's just write it. Um, 4 over, actually, let's, some, let's finish the answer. So 4 over 6 is going to uh, divide out to 2 thirds, right? 4 over 6 is equal to 2 thirds. So therefore, in my numerator, I'm now going to have just a 2. Oh, a 2 and an x. Oh, and the x's divide out. I missed those. So yeah, the x's divide out. So the only thing left is I'm going to have this 4, 6. Actually, let's just write everything back out. Not to get confusing, 4, 6, x minus 2 times x minus 2. Now again, as I mentioned, the 4 over 6 reduces to 2 thirds. And we can simplify x minus 2. You could multiply them out, but I'll just leave them as a binomial squared. 2, 3 times x minus 2 squared. Okay, So that's why it's important and not only helpful to get rid of the LCD or to use the LCD to simplify your fractions, but to then remember that we always want to continue simplifying. All right, so then in this example, um, you can see that now we don't have some terms that are very basic. We actually have to apply some factoring. So always, whenever you're looking at expression, these two were already simplified. There was nothing we could do. We just needed to find the LCD. But in here, we notice that my LCD is x minus 2, x plus 2. And then you could say x minus 2 minus 4. But we, remember, we, yes, you could just always multiply things. That's always going to give you a common denominator. But our idea is to find the least common denominator. So what I want to do is whenever I look at a denominator that can be factored, I'm just going to factor it right there. Well, x, minus two, x squared minus 4 can be factored into x minus 2 times x plus 2. So then in reality, if my LC, if you know my the only dip, the only two denominators that are different is x minus two and x plus two. I'm just repeating them, right? It's like saying, um, you know, what is the least common denominator? Five times six times five times six. Well, it's still going to be thirty, right? You're just going a little bit extra. So my LCD here is just going to be x minus two times x plus two. Now, you could write that as x squared minus 4, but I'll show you why. We want to make sure we use the division property. We want our terms to be separated by multiplication. So that's why it's important to leave that in its factored form. So again, let's just kind of go through the same thing. You're going to multiply every single term by your LCD. So since I'm a little bit out of space here, this isn't mathematically going to look like it's multiplying, but that's exactly what I'm doing. Here, I'll do x minus 2 times x plus 2. And again, you'll kind of see there's a really quick kind of pattern that emerges. The other thing that's important is you know you did something wrong as far as determining your LCD is if whatever number in your denominator doesn't divide into your LCD. That's very, very important, actually, for you to notice. You did something wrong with finding the correct LCD if a denominator does not divide into it, right? It's least common denominator. That means every single one of your denominators has to divide into that LCD. So if you picked a denominator LCD, you think it's something, but your denominator doesn't divide into it, then you did something wrong. Because watch, each and every one of these eliminates my denominator. And that's what the point of the LCD does. We don't want so many denominators. We want to get rid of our denominators. Um, so that's why multiplying by LCD is so helpful. So 
we're going to have some expressions here that we're going to need to simplify. So here I have 3 times x plus 2. And that's going to be minus 6 all over. This here is going to be 3 times x minus 2. And that's going to be plus. That's a 1 times x plus 2. All right, so I'm going to simplify in my head. Hopefully, I do my work. 3 times x is going to be 3x um, times 2 is going to be 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. So therefore, that's just going to be a 3x. Actually, I'll just do plus 6 minus 6 over 3x minus 6 plus x plus 2. All right, so therefore, that simplifies to 3x. And therefore, that becomes uh, 3x plus x is 4x. 4x, um, and then that becomes minus 4. You can factor out a 4, but that's not going to help you simplify any further. So unless it was on some problem on a test, I would just leave that answer as that. That's perfectly fine. Let's actually, oh, I didn't square these, did I? Here we go. All right, and then last but not least is, again, we have another one um, where now we have some denominators that you know have a trinomial, a binomial with a squared. So we really want to make sure we factor, factor, factor. Right? So before you just say, oh, the LCD is all of this stuff, we want to find the least common denominator. So we want to make sure we factor. So I'm just going to cross this through and say the factored form is 3 times uh, x squared minus 1, which is actually the same thing as 3 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. Okay? Over here, we have x plus 1. And then over here, this is a trinomial. So this is going to be x minus 4 times x plus 1. So the only thing common we have here is the x plus 1's. Um, x plus 1's between all of them. So therefore, I can say the LCD in this case is going to be a 3. So this one has a 3, but the rest of them need a 3. Um, we have x plus 1, x minus 1, and then x minus 4. Now again, to make sure we did this correctly, let's make sure when we multiply everything by our LCD, um, our denominators are no longer, our, our denominators are eliminated. So I'm going to multiply this one by 3 times x plus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 4. I know it doesn't look like I'm multiplying it, but you can see I'm kind of lost on a little space, so I apologize for that. So 3 times x plus 1. Okay. All right, so in my numerator, I have a 3 and a 3. I have an x minus 1 and an x minus 1. I have an x plus 1 and an x plus 1. So the only thing left that I'm multiplying by is an x minus 4. So that's going to be x minus 4 times 1, which is just going to be x minus 4. OK, and down here, my x plus 1's divide out. The only thing left I have is a 3 times a 5. That's a times, not a subtract. Times x minus 1 times x minus 4. And that's going to be minus. Over here, I have an x minus 4's divide out and x plus 1's divide out. So again, you can see I did the right work, right? All my denominators have divided out. Um, so the only thing left here is a, let's see, well, actually, never mind. Those all got divided out. Oh, yeah, so it's going to be minus, let's see, a 3 times x plus 4, because that's an x plus 4. So 3 times x plus 4 times x minus 1. OK. Um, now, you might be, might be hesitant to say, oh, well, let me go ahead and divide these out. But remember, the problem is we can only divide things out when terms are separated by multiplication or division. We have this expression and this expression are not separated by multiplication. They're separated by subtraction. So therefore, we cannot divide those x minus 4's out. Um, all I'm simply going to do, rather than multiplying this all out, expanding it, I am just going to expand uh, my terms. So I'm going to have a x minus 4. Actually, no, yeah, they're not the same. Oh, I could factor out an x minus 1, but eh. Um, so therefore, I'd have a 15. You could factor out a 3, but yeah, let's just leave this as that. x minus 1 times x minus 4 minus 3 times x plus 4 times. There's a couple, there's a many different ways actually we could go ahead and simplify this. Um, you know, factoring out common terms again, or actually just multiplying everything out and simplifying. Um, but to keep things relatively simple for this video, uh, the main important thing I want to drill down is find the LCD, multiply everything by the LCD, 
and then you can go to work on your problem. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that is how you simplify complex fractions. Thanks.